Right. So let's start with the beginning. Let's start with the basics. Let's lay the foundation. Let's give the backstory before we get into the main dish, perhaps. So what is Sway? Sway is an app found in Microsoft Office that allows the creation of interactive reports, personal stories, presentations, newsletters, and etc. Creations can be shared without the target audience having to sign in, sign up, or download anything. So once you have completed your um, presentation, you can share the link to different people and they won't have to actually have a Microsoft account logged into their Microsoft account to be able to view your presentation, unlike other uh, apps where people would have to first sign up and all of those things to view your presentation or your newsletter. With Microsoft's way, all you would have to do is share the link with your fellow colleagues, your learners or your parents, and they will be able to view what you have created. And then it is free to use if you have a Microsoft account. So whether it be Hotmail, Microsoft Hotmail, Microsoft Live or Outlook, you will be able to use your Sway account, but, and that's a huge but, if you do not have a Microsoft subscription, right, then you will only get certain features of the Microsoft Sway. It will still be good enough, but once you have a subscription, you will access the more premium versions of it, uh, where you get beautified or create certain things that are out of this world even more, okay? Right. Many of you, especially the people that are at other schools, you, your school might also have access to the Microsoft Sway account through your WCG schools account, right? Then you can also access it if it, the school does have a subscription to um, Microsoft. So the one way is through your Microsoft 365 app, um, either on your desktop or online. The next way could either be by opening up a tab and being logged into your Microsoft Edge and then go into the waffle here in the left hand corner. And once you click on the waffle, it will open up to the different apps that is linked to the Microsoft 365. Apps such as Outlook straight down to Teams. And then you will just click on the Sway app here right at the bottom. And the third way would be to actually Google the website itself, Microsoft Sway. And then it would pop up on your desktop like this right and then it will open up to this page right here okay all right as i said earlier on you're going to need to have a microsoft account in order to um, access the sway app right so you first click get started and then you would sign in with your microsoft account so mine is already preloaded because i love saving time and then we'll just wait a bit. And then it will open up to this home page right here once you have logged into your Microsoft account. Now, the great thing about Sway is that it's really minimalistic. So it does not have a lot of features on its home page, so it's easy for you to understand, but the things that it can do is incredible. So on the home page right here, you will have the three things here on top on the banner three different ways that you can create a presentation, which we'll get into, we'll dive into it right now. And then we'll also go to certain things such as MySway, the different um, newsletters or presentations or um, personal stories or interactive reports or even photo albums that you have created on your Sway over time. And then as you scroll down, you also get different templates to choose from. So you won't have to start from scratch. There are templates that you can choose from where you would just have to add your information or maybe just beautify it a certain way if you don't like it instead of having to start from scratch. And if you are still unsure about what Sway could do after this presentation, maybe it's just really overwhelming. You could just scroll down to the bottom of the Sway page and then you have different lessons that was created by different people on Sway, right? Lessons from habitat straight to solutions uh, to the world's biggest problems. So that you can access those creative, creative side of you to create a certain presentation that you would like or a certain newspaper that you would like. Right. So now that we have the home page right here, okay, we're going to leave this for last to create a new um, presentation because that is the one that I actually want to dive in deeper. 
But if you don't have a lot of time, or you want to save time and you actually want to make use of Sway to its full capacity, you could use these two right here. So the great thing about Sway is that it uses the Bing AI, right? So over the years, AI has emerged as something that everyone uses. Not everyone, but the people that enjoy technology as myself. And it's become really powerful. It's been uh, scary, the things that it can do. And Microsoft started their own one as well a few years ago, and they incorporated it into the Sway app, which I'll show you now. So instead of you creating something new or choosing a template, you could literally start from a topic. So if you have a topic in your head, like I'm an English educator, so I want to create a presentation about, say, poetry, right? But I don't want to go through all the tedious things of creating a new sway starting from scratch. I want something that's there already, where I can take out what I need and where I can just um, place in what I don't need. Okay, so I'm going to do something about poetry, for example. Okay, and then all I have to do is type in the topic here in the search bar right here. Press create outline. I will take usually a second or two or even quicker. Right, and in the matter of seconds, it basically created an outline for me of poetry, uh, poetry lesson that would happen, right? I won't add extra information and I won't basically do the presentation for you, but it will help you with the layout of your presentation. One that the AI things would work. Okay, so this is how it would look if I had to do nothing, right? So I'll just the preview view, which I will show you when we create our own presentation. And this is what the AI cre created in a few seconds. So instead of you having to go through all of those tedious things of actually starting from scratch, finding all the resources and all of those things, you could just press start from a topic, type in the type of topic that you want to focus on, and it will create an outline for you. I won't place photos. Well, okay. Now maybe you have a document or presentation or something that's already completed and you don't want to type in all of that information again. You could literally scan it or upload it onto the Sway account and it will create in a matter of seconds as well a Sway presentation for you. That's why this third option right here. Right? So either a PowerPoint, a document or a PDF can be uploaded and the Sway account or the Sway app will basically create a presentation for you. So then you will click on the start from a document. Then it will open up to your um, desktop right here. So I'm going to take something of poetry because I think that's our topic for today. Uh, just find it quick. A teacher. Right, let's take an anthem for Doom Death. That presentation that I created for my kids a, a few weeks ago. And it just takes a few minutes to load, or a few seconds actually to load, because it is going to create a new presentation from my presentation that I've already created. So just bear with me. And while it's loading, it does this with a PowerPoint, it does this with a Word document, Oh, okay. It does this with a Word document or PDF. So we'll take all of that information, everything that's written, and basically create a presentation for you. Right, as you can see there, this was all the things that was on my PowerPoint, from the photos to the different slides that I had. Right, so in a matter of seconds, it created a, basically a new presentation for me that I can use as either a newsletter that could go out or a link or wherever I would actually desire to use this presentation. Right, so once you have opened up, we press the create new. So we'll go back quickly. Once you have pressed the create new, we'll open up right here, which we'll call storyline. So like everything else in life, everything needs a storyline and storyline just basically is the uh, presentation that you are going to use, right? How are you going to create your presentation? Design will just basically relate to the style and those types of things, the different colors, the different backgrounds, 
all of those things that beautify your presentation will be found in design once you have completed your storyline. Uh, there's two things that I want to emphasize. Number one, planning is very important. As you can see, it is going to take a while when you start from scratch. But what will save time is if you have a clear plan in your head that you want your certain thing, a certain presentation to look a certain way. You want this and that information on there. You're going to use this and that image or audio and it will save time. But if you're just coming in and you're like, okay, I'm going to do something on poetry, but I don't know what information or I must still look for images or look for different analysis based on the poem, then it's going to take a little while but it is worth the effort. All right, so this block right here is called the card. So your Sway is made up of different cards that the Sway app will combine on its own. This is a card and it will be different cards that's linked to one another that will create your presentation. All right, the same like a PowerPoint, which has different slides. This just has different cards, okay? The first card will always be your title card. So what is the title of your presentation is going to be? So as I said, we have chosen to have a poetry presentation. So I'll just make the title poetry, right? Then you can also add a background to the headline banner. So if you click on the background, it, it will allow you to find different images from either your desktop, from a website, or it will provide you with suggestions based on what you have written as a headline. So I've written poetry, so to automatically search for different images that's related to my headline and right there. Okay, and very important, you must make sure that you're always using un, um, license, unlicensed pictures, sorry, so that you're not infringing on the copyright of everyone else. Okay, so I'm gonna use the book right here and then you'll just click on the image that you feel, oh, I like this one here. Click on the image that you feel suits your presentation best. And then it will have a tick next to it to say that you have selected this image. And then you will just have to click on the ad. Right, and boom. So as I told you, the design option will always will pop up or will show something once you have your banner and once you have certain things. So when you go over to the design side, this is how your banner will look. So this is going to be the top of my presentation. So don't worry if the photo looks small here in the corner and the wording looks small right here. It will pop up when you are finished into a much bigger um, card or presentation. Right. So once I have now my banner and I enjoy my banner. Oh, this is the best banner ever. Now I actually want to add information. I will click on the plus sign right here. Plus means add, so I want to insert content. So now I'll click on the plus side, and then it will provide me with different options. All right, so different options where I can create another heading, or I can add a text, different images, or upload a document or information from a document. Um, Text-wise, I can add media from images to videos to audio. I can even embed um, different um, images or videos from the internet to this page. The world is actually your oyster. You can do literally most things with this presentation that you would want to do. You can just let your creative juices flow, right? So we're going to go through each one individually. Uh, text, we're going to have a text, we're going to have an image maybe an audio and a video and then we're gonna upload a document about poetry that we created maybe a few weeks ago got off the internet so that it can also be included in our presentation right so the first thing we're going to do is a text so i want the text i want to type something about poetry right or copy and paste then i'll just press the in text right here right and then we'll open up another card just below of the banner card Okay, so then I would say maybe I wanted bullet points. Poetry is great. Poetry is complicated. That's just an example. I wouldn't really make a presentation such as this one. Poetry is complicated and maybe poetry is very thought provoking.
Right. So that's now going to be my ticks that I'm going to have under my banner. Now very creative, not much thought put into it, but I think it will do its job. Now, with any text, you can change the different things, right? So if you highlight the wording, you can increase the size by emphasize. You can change the differentiated text, so you can make it italics, right? And you can make it into a numeral um, counting system, right? One, two, three, four. Okay. Oh, right. So if you want to look at more things, right? So you want to expand and you want to change certain things on the presentation, you would just have to click on the details tab right here, and then it will open up such as this. Okay. So once you have expanded, you can either add another background to this card as well. You could change the fonts and those types of things of your wording right here. The, as I said, it is the a creative tool that you can use to your advantage. So you will go down to the images right here. Right, and I'll press an image. Okay, so I want to add an image of poetry or something. Right, so I'll take this right here. So the image is going to be a bit different than the background. As I see, the background will just be the background of the whole presentation, while an image will just be a small part of your presentation, right? Maybe the photo of a poet, maybe the photo of a map if you're doing geography or whatever it may be. So it won't fill up the whole presentation, it will just fill up a small part of the presentation. So I'll pick this one. As I said, you'll search for your um, you search for the photo that you would want, and then you press add. And then answering the previous question, if you do want to change the font of certain writing, you would go to design right here. Right, so this is the way my presentation looks so far. I have my banner, that's the background. I have poetry is great, that's my headline. I have certain writing, and then I have the image right here. Now, if I do want to change certain things, maybe I don't like the layout or the look of this presentation. Maybe it's a bit bland or boring. I'll go to the right top hand corner right here. And then I'll just press on styles. Right, then I can choose different styles and different ways that I want the text to be written on uh, my presentation. So maybe I don't like this one right here. Maybe I like something more uh, formal, right? Or maybe something a bit more creative. Then I will just click on the style that I like. Ooh, and there it will change the style. It will change the font for you. And then the great thing, it will also remix, basically change the style to the way that you would like it. So then this tab right here, the remix tab, will take this style and then mix it with another style, right? And then you can keep clicking the remix style until you find the desired font, the desired um, presentation that you like. And maybe you don't like what the AI has offered. Maybe you don't like what options they provide with provide you here. You can press the customize button and you can customize your presentation based on what you want. Right, so you don't like the fonts that they have provided, you don't like the way that they have um, laid out the presentation for you, all you would have to do is go to styles, either choose from what they have you already, or press customize, and then choose a different color inspiration, color palettes, and then choose from the different fonts that they have here. Right, there's not a plethora of fonts, they usually have the most common ones that people will use, but I think over time they will actually improve and increase. Okay, so let's go back to our storyline. So I've added an image, right? Pressing the plus button right here, pressing the image and then taking an image from the internet and then placing it onto my card right here. But now I feel like this topic is over. Poetry is great, that topic is done. Now I have a new topic, maybe starting with the poem itself. So then I'll click the plus button again, and then I'll press heading. So I won't press anything else because everything else will just add it to the topic of poetry is great. But now I want something new. 
So now press heading one. And as you see here on top, it will basically label each section according to what the heading is. Right, that's why it's labeled number one, section two, because there's no heading. So maybe the poem, uh, hope is a thing with feathers, because that's the uh, poem that my tens are dealing with. And then this would basically be the new section on your presentation. So the same way with the slide, which would have different slides in different sections, is the same way that you would basically add your content on this way um, app. Right? Again, maybe you want a background so that you can uh, differentiate with the rest of the presentation. Then you just have to click on background image. Right? And then obviously search for something different. Let's say a bird because Open and Think of Feathers is about uh, freedom being compared to a bird. Let's choose something cool. Let's maybe just take, let's just take the first one, for example. Right, and then if I go to design, then I can check, as you can see there, there's my whole presentation. You can check how it would look. And as you saw, all I did was add the image of the bird, but the AI technology on Sway and Sway itself basically created a slide for me with the birds in the background with the different colors based on the um, style that I chose here in the right hand corner. Right about hope is a thing with feathers. Now for this one, I want to actually add an analysis of hope is a thing with feathers, right? I don't want to just add the words. I don't want to just add writing or all of those things. I actually want to add a video, maybe a video from YouTube that explains hope is a thing with feathers. Now as an educator, I'm not gonna lie, sometimes I want to cut corners, but I can't because I'm an educator, but I do use YouTube videos as a aid uh, helping aid so that the learners can go home and actually revise or go hear certain things that they couldn't hear in the classroom. Because with time being cramped, it is very difficult to actually analyze a poem in depth, right? So then you press the plus button right here. Then you'll go to media, right? So you'll skip over text, you go to media. Now I want to upload a video. So now press the video button right here, okay? And then it'll open on the side the same way that the images open up, right? So again, you would actually search for the topic. So hope, hope is a thing worth feathers analysis. Right, and then it will basically using YouTube and scouring the internet, it will basically give you different um, results or different things that is related to how oh, piece of thing with feathers, right? The poem, because obviously I was very exact. The more exact you are with your search, um, the more options that you will get that will be related to your search, right? And I remember this one right here, because this is the one I use in the classroom. Then you'll just click on the video that you like and then you'll just press add again. Okay. And as I said, it will always pop small in the corner right here. But once you go to the design button, the video would pop up at the bottom with a play button. So when I press play, as you can see here, the video will automatically play on the presentation the same way it would play on a PowerPoint. That's how you can embed a video onto the site. Okay. But if you do have, right, if you do have videos that you have on your device already, or even if you have images from the device already, then all you have to do is go to this drop down right here by suggested. Press the drop down and it will give you different options where you can go and find the different resources that you have on your desktop. Or as myself, I use OneDrive on my OneDrive or by using Flickr, Bing or YouTube. Okay. But now I want to upload maybe a document. Okay, a document that's related to the thing, I hope is the thing with feathers. Then I will just go down to upload right here. Okay. Then I'll just go and find basically um, the presentation or the document that I would like. 
to notes. Right, maybe I want to do now the figures of speech and sound devices glossary so that they have it while they're studying. Then I will just click on the document that I have right here. Press open. And we'll just take a moment quickly. And it will basically type out this document for me. So everything that was on the document, still me pressing copy and paste, or we'll basically copy and paste it on the document for you. Right, so we'll create another section called Poetry Definitions, because that's what the whole document was about. And then you could just upload that document without having to change anything, and it will change everything for you. So it will convert it for you with the definitions and all of the information that is on there. But remember, it will just copy and paste what was on the document. So you would still have to edit and make it into paragraphs and omit and add the things that you would like or to make it into a bullet point or make it into bullet points or to increase the size and increase the fonts as I showed you with the style icon. Okay. If you want to swap the things around, all you have to do is click on your sway, on your sway card, drag it up wherever you desire it, and then we'll automatically place it in between the different cards that you would like. And if you don't like the card or you don't like what's written in the card, you can just press the pin button right there and we'll discard the card from your Sway uh, presentation. Okay, voiceovers you can, if you press the plus button and then you press the media and you press audio, you can add audio that is related to the uh, presentation. You can even record yourself without having an audio file that's already there. You would just have to press record and then allow and then you can add voiceovers and you can add all of those things to your presentation. Maybe oh. you have different um, photos, right? Maybe it's for a sport newspaper that you are creating, a news data, sorry, you are creating. Okay, and I know for a newspaper or for a news data, sorry, or for something that's going out to appearance that's maybe about sport or about culture or about social events that happen in school, there are a lot of photos taken. Now you can create an interactive feature on your presentation, which allows the person that's viewing your newsletter or your presentation to actually scroll through the photos. Right, the same way as if you're having a stack of photos in your hand and then you're flipping one by one through it, you can add, have that same feature on your Sway presentation. Then all you have to do is press the plus button, go to stack, right, and then add content. So you could either add different content either in the form of different text that will basically rotate around one another or different images but no one wants to actually look through text so let's try images right and then let's take different images that's related to say sport sport let's just searching quickly because it is vague and then i'll just press click so you can choose more than one Right, because it's obviously going to be a stack of photos that the person can scroll through. It's just like ones that are related to sport. Right, so I chose six images right there. And the plus sign will tell me here that this image has been selected. Okay, and then I'll press add after I've collected them all. Right. And these are going to be my six images that's going to be presented as a stack on my um, presentation. I'll show you quickly how it looks. And here it is, right? So when I click on all these images, it basically moves like someone is holding the photos and they're scrolling through it. Isn't that cool? So you can add all the Im images that your school has of maybe an event, maybe it was a social event, maybe you had a carnival and there's like 30 or 40 photos. You can add all of those photos to the stack feature right here. Well, right, so you can combine what you have created with what you have already created on PowerPoint. By going to media, okay, by going to the upload button right here to insert from your device. Okay, and then I'm gonna go to resources, say literature notes. 
let's take tomorrow's daughter because that's also a poem that we are dealing with and then you just click on the powerpoint and press open right it's just taking a moment quickly and once that has com uh, been completed i will basically take all of those things that's on my powerpoint and combine it to the existing presentation that i have right now so this is the powerpoint that i created for tomorrow's daughter a poem that we are dealing with in grade 11 and we'll basically take that whole presentation with the video that i added that basically started my was the start of my presentation so i played a song about the a poem before i start actually analyzing and reading the poem with my learners and it took everything that i wrote down or typed on my phone something on my presentation something that i said like an hour to doing and it basically just added to the presentation already Right, so you can upload documents, you can upload presentations, PDFs, and it will add it seamless, seamlessly into your presentation. And this is what it would look like. So I hope it's a thing with feathers, and I have tomorrow's daughter, and as you can see here, it added everything for me. Without me having to actually choose, or without me having to draw text boxes, or copy and pasting different things over again. Right, but very important, the document has to be on your device or somewhere saved for, in order for it to be uploaded to the site. Because you can't just go on the internet, type in document and then take that document and then upload it. It's not going to work that way. It has to be on your device, it has to be saved somewhere. All right, so maybe I don't like this design because I add a lot more things so it looks a bit more cluttered. Now I want something more. once i have the way i want my presentation to look so i like this right i'm a very minimalistic guy i don't like over the top colors or all of those things i like things to just look formal and proper so i like it this way okay but maybe i don't like the way it will be viewed so this here on top shows you the way it will be viewed so this will be viewed horizontally so the person would have to scroll horizontally to view all the content if i choose vertically the person will have to scroll like it would be a website where they'll scroll up and down. Or you could choose a third option where it can be displayed as slides. As you can see here in different slides. Now, the great thing about this feature is that you can actually view the presentation the way that the reader or the viewer would view your presentation by going to the play button right here. Right, so if I click on the play button, this is the way that the content will be viewed by the reader. As you can see, it even added animations to the words for me without me actually having to choose animations. You can choose the animation that you want by going to the customize button as I showed you and you can choose different animations and those types of things. Not different, but you can choose the speed that the animations would be moving. As I said, and as we said early on, a lot of things will be taken out of your hands, but there's a lot that you can still have control over. Right, so let's go back to the play button. And then this is the way your reader, whoever your learners or the parents, or even if you're presenting at a company or wherever, they would see your presentation. Right, and as you can see here, the photos are very interactive. You can scroll to it. I love this feature. And right here on the right hand corner, you can increase. Right, so they can view the photos more in depth instead of just looking on the small photo right here. All right, and in the video, as I said, there's a play button. We should play the video directly onto the screen of the individual right, right. there. So now that I have everything done, okay, now I feel like it's time to share my design with the world. Then you will go to the share button right here. So unlike other different sites where you have to look for the share button, the share button is right here in the right hand corner next to the three dots. So the three dots will basically just tell you things such as maybe create a new Sway account or you could save this presentation, this template that you have created onto your Sway account so that other people can use. You can even print the presentation 
I'll just press print quickly just to show you. And then we'll change it into a PDF that you can print for your learners, right? So especially in schools, right? I just wanna show you quickly how to look if it is printed. Right, so we'll print it out as a document such as this one right here, cell phones or on the laptops. And I forgot to mention that it will work on cell phones as well. Right, because it is a Microsoft app, if a person clicks on the link that you share with them, it will open up and it will basically show you, is this not right now, accessibility view. I will show you how it would look on a cell phone as well. So that's the way it would have looked on a cell phone, a bit bigger, right? And it will basically have a different format as well. Okay, so you press the share button right here. Right, and it's easy and simple. So you have three ways that you can share your Sway presentation. You can either share it with specific people or groups. Right, so then you type the email addresses of the specific people or groups. So I'll maybe share it with Ms. Bailey or whoever. Right, then you will just type in the email address. quick I just want to type in my email address to share with myself right and then you can invite the people to either view or edit your sway presentation but maybe you don't have everyone's email account maybe it's too tedious because I hate that option because then you have to type each one individually or copy and paste the email addresses from somewhere right then you could share the link with anyone in the world, actually. So there's a few ways that you can share the link. You can get the visual link, right? So it's basically gonna be like a small image that you can paste at the bottom of an email or on a WhatsApp group or on a Teams group that would be interactive. So I'm just gonna, and then you could paste it there. So when the person clicks on the image, I will basically take them to this presentation site, right? So it won't take them to the, the way the site looks right here, or we'll take them to the way the site looks right here, which is great. Right, so those are the three ways. And then thirdly, you can actually set it in such a way that people would need to require a password to view or edit this way, right? So you can set the password, maybe a password, let's set the password as pumpkin. Right, so if it is confidential information or it is presentation that's maybe about the secret formula or about things that the school has in the pipeline, maybe a, a special event or those other things you don't want um, other people to steal the idea or, or learners to actually find the presentation on someone's computer because that's happened before. Right, uh, so then the person have to type in a password so that they can access the document or to access the presentation. So you can make it really safe. So even though it's saved on your cloud and it has already safety because you'd have to log into your cloud and those types of things. Sometimes we get to log out of our cloud devices. I'm very guilty. I log in everywhere with my cloud, which is so wrong, but it's so quick if I have to just quickly go on a desktop or whatever, so I'm never signed out. But it's also easy for people to go into my documents and go find certain things. So this is great for providing privacy for yourself and for your fellow colleagues, right? But we're not gonna have a password on this right here. And with anything that is cloud-based, you can collab. So you can add different things. You can basically add different cards together. So maybe 10 of you are creating presentation for uh, assignment or the learners have an assignment that they have to do, right? Maybe a group presentation on for the auto mark in English or whatever, then they can collectively, the same way with PowerPoint, create the presentation on here that they can display in the classroom. Now with that, you would have to just click here to edit. So people won't just be viewers, they will also be editors, so they'll be allowed to edit. If you don't want people to edit your work, you want to just send it to normal students or to normal parents, you would just press the view button to so make sure that the gray box is ticked right there right and then you press send you copy the link so the my swaves as i've said before is that it basically shows you all of the different sways that you have created right i created a newsletter comprehension poetry and all of those things but the three different tabs right here are very impressive 
I so the three different tabs are basically break down for you <laughs> what so is you have viewed in the past so i viewed a few days ago this basically this lesson that was created by someone on the soy um website and i will basically also show you if you go into the different templates and stuff or pop up here so if you like the one and then you logged out and you logged in you want to find that one again that you viewed maybe two or three weeks ago it will all be listed under viewed so all the soys that you viewed while you were logged in this is the my favorite part the analytics As you can see here, uh, it will basically tell you how many people has logged in onto the link that you have shared and viewed your presentation. It tells you the total number of views. It tells you the average time spent by the individual on your presentation. It tells you how many people have actually completed or actually gone through your presentation from start to finish. And it even breaks down based on the amount of time that the person has spent on your presentation or if they just glanced at it, if they read quickly, or if they have read it in depth. So let's maybe play around here. So these are different lessons that was created by different people on the Sway site, right? Right, so just bear with me. And this is a presentation that was created by someone about electricity. Right, so you can change the layout and all of those things. And you can duplicate this way. So you can make a copy of this way and then edit this, uh, this way for yourself. And then on most computers, there will be the book that says immersive reading, or it will be the A that will read this page out loud. If you click on it, so there's many more things that you can do with Sway. Right, Sway is not just limited to to uh, basically what PowerPoints are limited to, where you can just do certain things. What Sway you can collab with everyone. It will save you time over the long run. As you saw now, I just uploaded presentations, I uploaded Word documents, and it created a presentation for me. Yes, there's certain things that will be taken out of your hands, right? Certain things that's not going to be for your liking, but that's ultimately there to save time for you as an educator so that you can spend more time on the learners and spend less time on planning, right? Because at the end of the day, we are trying to do things that are beneficial to the learners, but we're also trying to integrate technology in the classroom.